Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today welcome to my honourable mentions for 2022. So I read so many fantastic books in 2022 that a favourites of the year video was simply not enough. So I have already posted a video of my favourite 21 books of 2022, um, but I have 25 other books that I want to tell you about today, which are also like fantastic five star reads that I really, really loved reading in 2022. I read a lot of fantastic books. Um, I wanted to make an honourable mentions video partly because there are just a lot of other wonderful books I read last year that I really wanted to talk about, but also because I'm aware that like um, certain genres tend to dominate my like favourite books of the year list and um, basically historical fiction and classics tend to dominate because those are like my favourite kinds of things to read but that does mean that there might be like other books in different areas and um, that don't tend to get into my favourite books of the year but I do really enjoy um, and also there's like plenty of historical fiction and classics I read in 2022 that was fantastic five star wonderful I really want to recommend that I just didn't have like space for in that video so we're going to talk about some of those books today I'm not going to rank the books I mentioned today I'm just going to go through in categories um, and I'm going to start off and tell you about some classics which were really really fantastic um, that I didn't have time and space to mention in my favourite books of the year video. So one book I really really enjoyed in 2022 was The Young Pretenders by Edith Henrietta Fowler. This is a Victorian children's book um, which is about these two young children. Um, I think they're five and seven at the beginning um, and the title of the book is The Young Pretenders because they really like to pretend um, and they play lots of games where they're pretending to be other people. Their parents are living abroad um, and at the beginning of the book their grandmother dies and so they um, move from being looked after by their grandmother to being looked after by their aunt and uncle. And the book is in many ways about the friendship that develops between Barbara and her uncle Charlie. Um, and it's just a really, really sweet, lovely book um, that is very like fun and comic and silly but also has like some really serious undertones to it which I thought were done really really well um, and I just really really liked it. I thought it was a fantastic book. I read two Australian classics in 2022 that I really loved. One of them was My Brilliant Career by Mars Franklin. This was first published in 1901 and it's a kind of unconventional coming of age story about a girl called Sabella. I really liked Sabella as a character. I feel like she was really interesting and well developed um, and I liked her kind of character arc and the way that um, kind of convention and gender roles were kind of explored in this book. I just thought it was a really good read and definitely one I'd recommend. And then I also think that I really love Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. It's such a weird book that I almost don't feel certain that I love it, but I think I did. It was really, really great and really bizarre and fascinating. So this is an Australian modern classic from the 1960s, um, but it's set in the early 20th century and it's about what happens when three girls um, are on a picnic from their boarding school school when they all vanish in a mysterious almost like is it supernatural is it not what on earth could have happened kind of way it's a very strange book in many ways and I still haven't like decided what I think about the ending but in general I feel like it was just really really powerful and a book that I'll be thinking about for a while so I think it deserves a place in the honorable mentions of 2022. Another classic I loved in 2022 was Half a Lifelong Romance by Eileen Chang. This is a Chinese classic from the 1930s and it's kind of about the sort of um, complicated, doomed relationship between two young people who meet while working at a factory. They fall in love, but social circumstances and family circumstances kind of keep them apart um, and things kind of go on from there. It's not a happy book by any means. It kind of reminded me of Thomas Hardy actually in terms of the um, sort of plot structure and the tone of it. Um, but I thought this was really, really fantastic. It was such a powerful, emotional novel um, and really, really impactful. So I would really, really recommend Half a Lifelong Romance and I definitely want to read more by Irving Chang in the future. I read several Agatha Christie books in 2022 and I think my favourite one was probably Why Didn't They Ask Evans. This is one of her standalone mysteries. It begins with a young man um, coming across a body of a man who seems like he has fallen off a cliff but maybe he was pushed um, and everything kind of goes on from there. I think it's a really good mystery. The kind of dynamic between the two um, main characters who are kind of solving mystery together was really fun um, and I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great mystery with lots of twists and turns and yeah really thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd highly recommend Why Didn't They Ask Evans. Finally for the classics in this video, a modern classic that I absolutely loved in 2022 was Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. This is a fantastic book um, which was published in the 80s and is set partly in the 70s and partly in 1815. We're following a woman called Dana um, who is living her life in the USA in the 1970s when suddenly she is pulled backwards in time by some strange force um, back to 1815 where because she is a black woman she is a 
assumed to be a slave um, and she seems to have to continually save the life of this little white boy who is in danger and has some link to Dana and everything kind of goes on from there. This is a really really fantastic book um, what I'd highly recommend. I feel like one of the things that um, surprised me about this book was that it is it's kind of a thriller like it's so fast-paced um, which is fantastic and it's just really really hard to put down and I feel like the way Octavia E. Butler manages to like balance that really really fast-paced plotting um, and tension with really really deep complicated nuanced explorations of really difficult themes is just fantastic and incredibly powerful um, I really really recommend Kindred I think it's fantastic and yeah what a book would highly highly recommend it. Moving away from the classics to contemporary novels and um, I have quite a few I want to mention and we'll start off with a few historical fiction books so one book that I read in 2022 which I loved was The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon this is a fantastic book set in 1970s England over one very hot summer um, and it's basically about two young girls who are trying to solve the mysteries of their street um, so at the beginning of the book someone goes missing from their street um, and they have decided that they are going to find out what's happened to her and everything kind of goes on from there we're following both the two children and also the adults um, who live on this street and it's clear that whatever has happened with the woman who has vanished has something to do with something that happened several years Years before. I thought this was a fantastic book. I feel like it's so well observed. I feel like the way it explores like English um, small town life was really really great and the characterization, the complexities of it, the kind of philosophical um, and social issues kind of beneath the surface in this were just great. I highly highly recommend it. Thor was fantastic. Yeah such a great book. Another work of historical fiction I loved in 2022 was The Long Song by Andrea Levy. Um, this is a fantastic book which is set in the 19th century in Jamaica and um, so it spans several different years. Um, you can see it on the spine of the book, which I think is really fun. 1800, 1831 and 1850. This book follows the life of a woman called July, who is born as a slave in Jamaica. And we follow her through her life um, as slavery is abolished in Jamaica um, and kind of what happens afterwards. I feel like this book was such a wonderful, powerful work of historical fiction. Um, and I feel like the kind of structure of it worked really well. Um, so the idea is that um, July is telling her own story. She's writing it down, um, but she's writing it in the third person. And her son Thomas is like looking over her shoulder being like are you sure that's right why haven't you spoken about this bit and I just thought that structure like worked really nicely and um, I really really liked that um, and the other thing that I thought was really well done about this book is that um, the history of the abolition of slavery in Jamaica is like always in the background of this book but that's not the story that July is necessarily telling she's telling the story of her life and that was the backdrop of her life but that wasn't her life um, and I feel like that is really well explored in this book um, and I feel like the character relationships and July's like actual life and relationships and what was important to her was so well done and I just loved this. I thought it was really really fantastic and yeah would highly recommend it. Another wonderful work of historical fiction I read in 2022 was The Magician by Colm Tobin. This is a fictionalised account of the life of the novelist Thomas Mann who was born in Germany in the late 19th century and this book follows decades of his life um, looking at his writing career, his family and also the history of Germany over the late 19th and 20th century. Thomas Mann's experience um, as Germany changed very dramatically in the 1920s and 30s um, as he ended up going into exile in the 1940s and I feel like um, the history that was explored within The Magician was fantastic but also the sort of pulled back um, emotionally detached narrative style just worked really well to almost increase the emotion um, and I feel like the exploration of Thomas Mann as a character um, who was a very very complicated character within the novel is just fantastic so I'd highly recommend The Magician. Um, I thought it was a really really great book and yeah one I would definitely recommend. And then I also wanted to mention Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid which I loved. Um, I really like Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've read several of her books before and this was really really powerful. I feel like Taylor Jenkins Reid is really fantastic at capturing characters. I feel like her characterization is so solid and real and complex and wonderful. So this book is set kind of focused around one day and um, all about this big party that this famous family um, who are the children of um, a celebrity are having Having. Um, they're having this big party and in the first half of the novel we're following them kind of in the run-up to the 
the party and then the second half of the novel is the party itself but we also get flashbacks to their childhood um, and we soon learn that um, growing up with um, a very famous father has kind of messed up their family in a lot of complicated ways. I just love this book so much. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was so well written and so poignant. I feel like the characterization was superb. I love the structure in this book. The emotional resonance of it was fantastic. And yeah, I just, I just loved it a lot. I just thought it was really, really fantastic. So yeah. Barbara Rising is set in the 1980s. So sort of at the upper end of historical fiction. And we're going to move away from historical fiction now, but stick with some contemporary novels. One book that I really, really loved in 2022 was The Coward by Jared McGuinness. This is a fantastic kind of coming of age story in a way, I suppose. Um, the main character is in his kind of um, mid to late twenties, I think, but I do feel like this is a coming of age story in many ways. So this book is, I think, a kind of semi-autobiographical novel. Um, certainly it says in the front of the book, um, the first page has this picture and says, um, the distance between fiction and memoir is measured in self delusions. Um, and the main character in the book is called Jared. So I feel like the main character is loosely based on the author, um, whether or not he is actually the author, I don't know. So this book follows what happens when the main character, Jared, um, is in a car accident, which means that he is left needing to use a wheelchair. Um, he's not able to live on his own immediately, so he moves back in with his dad, who he hasn't spoken to for 10 years. And really at the heart of this book is the relationship between Jared and his dad, their kind of complicated, messy relationship, how it was affected several years ago back in Jared's childhood when his mother died. We have several flashbacks to Jared's childhood, um, and we're kind of following him both as a child and his coming of age story making all the wrong choices and then we're also following him in his 20s and his kind of new coming of age story as he gets to know his dad better falls in love and kind of gets to know himself a bit better um, and I just thought this was so powerful so fantastically written um, really really wonderful coming of age story just brilliant so I highly recommend The Coward I thought it was fantastic another book I really enjoyed in 2022 was The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki this is a weird delightful book um, which is quite strange but I also really, really enjoyed. Um, the kind of setup premise of this book is that this book is being narrated by a book um, and that everyone in life has their own book um, and their book can kind of tell their story. And we're following a young boy called Benny. He's 13 years old when his father passes away. And this book is basically about how him and his mother deal with grief. Um, and in the wake of his father's death, Benny starts to hear objects, inanimate objects, talking to him. And throughout the book, it's never quite clear whether this is kind of magic realism or a mental health thing or a bit of both, or, you know, magic realism as a metaphor for mental health. Basically, this book is Benny's story, but it's being told to us by Benny's book that has, like, found him and can talk to him. It's quite weird, but it just works. I found this really poignant and engaging, and I'd highly recommend it. I think Ruth Zeki is a great writer, and yeah, I really love this one. Another book I really enjoyed in 2022 is Into the Mouth of the Lion by A.B. Chazé. This book is set in 2002 in Angola during the Civil War. And we're following a young photographer, Lena, um, who ends up going to Angola um, looking for her sister and everything kind of goes on from there. This was just a really interesting read, um, really pacey with really complicated character relationships. I thought the relationship at the heart of it between Lena and her sister was really interestingly explored and kind of everything that happens to Lena and her character arc was done really well. Just really really like this one and yeah definitely one I'd recommend. My favourite thriller of the year was If I Die Before I Wake by Emily Koch which was a fantastic read and um, so this is a thriller which is told from the perspective of someone who has locked in syndrome and um, so this man is lying in hospital unable to move uh, but he can hear what is going on around him so he's you know effectively in a coma but he's fully aware and as the book goes on it becomes clear that the accident that has um, left him in this coma may not have been an accident at all but may have been an attempted murder and basically we're following our main character as all the people move around him um, and he begins to piece together what might have actually happened um, and work out exactly what the situation is by listening to everyone around him um, who are talking kind of around his be bed in hospital and um, I feel like the very setup of that is just so interesting and it's done so well it's so fantastic and this book is both like really really moving and powerful but also really pacey and interesting and engaging it's just a fantastic thriller really really 
great book and yeah one I would highly recommend. My favourite rom-com of the year was probably 12 Days in May by Neve Hagen which is a fantastic rom-com um, set around the Cannes Film Festival about two people um, Lizzie and Callum who haven't seen each other for 12 years when they meet again um, and we know that 12 years ago when they were 20 something happened between them but we're not really sure what and it ended very badly but here they are 12 years later um, and kind of circumstances throw them together around the film festival and everything kind of goes on from there. I feel like Neve Hagen does a fantastic job of balancing the kind of comedy and the romantic stuff with exploring complicated issues to do with kind of um, self-doubt and confidence um, and I feel like those things were just done so well. It was such a fantastic read, really just lovely and a joy in every way and I, one I would highly highly recommend. Moving away from novels I read some really standout short stories and short story collections in 2022. Um, so one I wanted to mention is The Machine Stops by Ian Forster, so a classic short story. Um, there are actually two short stories in this edition that is um, The Machine Stops and The Celestial Omnibus. I did really like The Celestial Omnibus too, but The Machine Stops I liked more. And basically it's set in the future in a world where everyone lives underground um, and the machine runs everything. People don't move around, people don't travel, people don't see each other, they just all communicate through the machine. The machine runs everything and of course what on earth are they going to do at some point when the machine stops. I just really enjoyed this story. I thought it was fantastic, really powerful and interesting and yeah, Ian Foster is such a great writer, a real favourite of mine. A classic short story collection that I really really loved in 2022 was this. This is Women Who Did Stories by Men and Women 1890 to 1914. So this is a collection of short stories all focused around the new woman movement. I thought this was a really really fantastic standout short story collection. I didn't love every story that never happens in a short story collection but there were so many fantastic short stories stories in here. I think a few specific highlights for me would be um, The Yellow Drawing Room by Mona Caird, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, um, Everything by Kate Chopin in here which was great, um, An Imaginative Woman by Thomas Hardy which was fantastic, Virgin Soul by George Edgerton. Um, there were just so many great stories in here and yeah I'd highly recommend it as a collection. Back in April I read um, The Ladies of Grace Adieu by Susanna Clark, which was a wonderful short story collection. Um, so I will say that this is a quite strongly linked to her novel um, Jonathan Strange and Miss Norrell and I don't think you should read the short story collection until after you've read Jonathan Strange and Miss Norrell but if you really like Jonathan Strange and Miss Norrell then this is well worth a read because it's a collection of short stories which is kind of like mythology and folklore from the world um, that Jonathan Strange and Miss Norrell is set in. I just love this so much. Um, I really love the kind of stories in here. I thought they were really atmospheric and engaging um, and I just love the way Susanna Clarke writes so I highly recommend this as well. Then I have two Japanese short story collections which I loved in 2022. This is Things Remembered and Things Forgotten by Kyoko Nakajima um, and this was translated from the Japanese by Ian McLaughlin McDonald and Ginny Tapley Takamori. There were so many great stories in here but my favourite was a story called My Wife Was a Shiitake um, which is about a man kind of falling in love with his wife after her death when he discovers her recipe books and through cooking stuff from her recipe books he kind of gets to know her much more than he ever did in his life. Um, and it's just really beautiful and poignant. I feel like this is such a great collection, one I'd really recommend, and it's filled with stories about the themes of memory, which is one of my favourite themes in literature. Then I also really loved Dead and Memories by Banani Oshimoto, translated from the Japanese by Asa Yonenda. This is a fantastic short story collection. I really love Banani Oshimoto, she's one of my favourite writers, and I really enjoyed the stories in this collection, especially Dead and Memories, the title story itself. Um, which is basically about this young woman who after her fiance splits up with her is kind of like trying to move on with her life. She befriends a man who works um, in the bar beneath her flat and the story is kind of about her moving on with her life and I just thought it was really beautiful. I love Banani Oshimoto's writing so much and this was a great collection. There's one non-fiction book I wanted to mention today and that is The Genius of Jane Austen by Paula Byrne. This is a work of non-fiction of course all about Jane Austen um, and specifically about how theatre influenced Jane Austen and how kind of it's important to look at Jane Austen's books not just in the context of the novels of her time but in the context of the theatre from her time. I just thought this was such a fantastic book which I found so engaging and so interesting and I feel like it really like opened my eyes to lots of things that I hadn't really thought through in Jane Austen before. I just feel like it's been one of the best literary criticism books I've read and I feel like I owe a great debt of gratitude to Paula Byrne for like making me fall in love with Sense and Sensibility. I read this non-fiction book shortly before rereading Sense and Sensibility and Sense Sensibility has always been one of my least favourite Jane Austen books but I feel like the way Paula Byrne talked about it made me love it um, and 
there, so I'm kind of really grateful for that as well. So highly recommend The Genius of Jane Austen. Not one to read unless you've like read all of Jane Austen, but a really great read if you're a Jane Austen fan. There's also one play I wanted to mention today, which is Lungs by Duncan Macmillan. This play is basically just one extended conversation between a couple um, as they get older. Um, and basically we start off with them when they're quite young and they're discussing whether or not they want to have a baby and everything kind of just spirals on from there. Um, and there are no like scenes. It's just kind of one conversation, but they do move in time and every now and then they like jump to a new situation. It's hard to explain, but it just works fantastically. It was wonderful to read. Really, really powerful. All the themes it looks at were done so well and I just loved it. Would highly recommend this. Finally, for my 2022 honourable mentions, there are three works of poetry I wanted to mention. One is Deaf Republic by Ilya Kaminsky. This is um, a collection of poetry, but there is a kind of through narrative. And this basically tells a story of an unnamed town during a war, which is invaded. Um, and after a deaf boy is killed, the people of the town refuse to speak um, and they pretend to all of the soldiers that they're deaf in order not to communicate with them um, and they develop a kind of sign languages to speak to each other. I just thought this was a really powerful work of poetry. It's really, really well done um, and the through narrative through it I think helps if you're slightly less familiar with poetry so definitely one I'd recommend. It was a really great read. And then the other two poetry collections I wanted to mention in my honourable mentions, I actually read both of them in December so I spoke about them quite recently. Um, one is Where the Memory Ends by Hibak Osman. Um, this is a really, really beautiful lyrical poetry collection which looks at themes of memory and belonging and identity. I just loved this. I thought it was so well written and powerful and poignant um, and just a really fantastic read. And then my final honourable mention for 2022 is Oak by Catherine Towers, which again, actually, a bit like Deaf Republic, is kind of somewhere between a collection of poetry and a long poem. Um, and this is just a poem or a collection of poetry, which is all about the life of an oak tree, kind of from its beginnings to its end. And I just really liked it. I thought it was really beautiful and powerful and definitely one I'd recommend. So there we have it. Those are all the books I wanted to mention today. My 2022 honourable mentions. I love all of these books a lot. Um, I feel like I would have liked to include all of them in my 2022 favourite books of the year video, but then it would have been even longer than it was. And it was already pretty long, wasn't it? Um, but I really, really highly recommend all these books. I think they're fantastic. Do please let me know down in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Let me know what books you really loved in 2022. And that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll be back very soon with another book video.